Hey, what's up, guys? Team Heart Life, Captain Albert Sertucci here. All right, so for a while there, uh, a lot of my subscribers have been asking, well, what type of gear do I personally use? Well, what I've done is, it's going to be a two-part thing. One is, I'm going to show you the rods that I have, and then two will be the reels that I have. Obviously, my rods are going to be a lot more, because if you remember, back when I said I used to fish Bob Hall Pier all the time before I actually started up my business, I had a lot of rod and reel combos because I was fishing with Pan and Shimano and Noodles and all of that. That'll be that video. But this one, I want to go ahead and show you the rods that I'm fishing with now and you know what kind of history they have. This is going to be, I'm going to try and make it as quickly as possible because a lot of these rods have a lot of history with me. And we'll try and get through it quickly, but I don't know how well this is going to go because, like I said, yeah. Nice little wall of uh, working it up, but it has taken me about 17 years to get to this collection. So it ain't something that's going to happen overnight unless you got crazy money. But for me, it was a work in progress, one rod at a time, two rods at a time, or whatever it was. But I definitely put in a lot of work into the, to creating this collection. So hope you all enjoy. This is Team Hard Life Captain Albert Tucci, private stock. Got a, got a lot of stress on my mind It's a nice day to go Yeah, I got a line I'm a caller The whole team So, right here I've got a 575 bronze Arnell Actually, I found this one in a pawn shop And I've already caught a 10-foot tiger with this one This one was actually the first tiger that was ever caught During a land-based catch and release tournament In the state of Texas To break 10 foot so this is the rod that did it. Did it with Navy Abbott. This one came into the collection, but I haven't finished putting it together because I want to fight the correct, find the correct unibot for it and stuff like that. But yeah, that's another Harnell right there. This is another Harrington right here. It's a 2522, and this one I actually found in the pawn shop as well. I had it rewrapped because. The original coat of epoxy was actually cracking, so when he rewrapped it, it actually bled through and it gave it a wet look, but at the same time, too, it gave it like a tiger stripe appeal to it. So I was like, I really like that. So that's why that one's in that collection. <clears throat> this one was a Harrington that was bought back when the tackle box was a shop here in Corpus Christi, Texas. The original buyer bought it about 40 years ago and has had it ever since. And finally got to the age where he couldn't handle the rod anymore, so he switched up and went to some lighter rods. But this is one of the ones that has come in the collection as well. So I haven't had a chance to fish with it yet, but it's one of the ones that, you know, maybe my son will get to it before I do. <coughs> This one was some kind of rawhide that came in. I mean, it's a beast of a rod. And we're saying it, it's a rawhide because right there it's got scraped off and we can see some of the internal uh, composite of the rod. However, it's so corroded and blown up in here, we haven't actually had a chance to actually disassemble this or not. But I definitely am looking for a buyer for the, the lower unit if I ever decide to rewrap this rod and get it going but more than likely when rods are like this I don't like to rewrap them I'd rather epoxy over them and control the history of it so that way it doesn't get lost but yeah this is one of the ones that I got for the wall this one was another 575 Harrington and we got it in and again the Stuff like this I really don't like to use because I don't like to mess up these Varmac reel seats and stuff like that. Especially since, you know, they're in such great condition. It's real hard to really beat it up. Now the rod, I know I can get it redone, refinished and all of that. And it'll work really nice. I just got to get back on that one. Now this one is a 555 that was cut down. And this one is made famous because this is the rod that I actually fought a manta ray with. For three hours 
with an 80 Abbott, and at that time it was a gold 80 Abbott. And right there too, that's the original stamp. It's not a sticker, it's a stamp that was found when they were fixing the phone, they were redoing it, and they actually had to come from the backside to shove the phones on this way in order to fix them. And yep, added epoxy over so that way we can forever uh, protect that stamp on there. Had my name put on there. And yep, it's a very awesome rod, very strong rod. And then here I've got a 552 Harrington. This one, this one, and the twin like it, which is actually not here. I've got six other rods that are still not here right now. There are more 552s and seven or uh, 575s that aren't here. But this one, this one, and the twin like it were the first three Harringtons that I ever got in my collection back in 2002. Um, <coughs> And this is really going to blow you blow your mind on it. When I originally bought them, he had them up there for 275 and 250 a rod. I said, "Well, how much for all three of them?" He's like, "Well, you know, maybe I could do like 200 a piece if you pay cash." So there I go, dropped you know 600 dollars on it, and I got all three rods. I went back the next day and I actually found this one, <clears throat> which is a full length. This one's a full length, 10 foot. 553. The reason it has a unibud on it, or not really a unibud, but a 130 pound class unibud on it was because I had the butt cap off and I actually dropped it one day and I actually split the butt in. So what I did was I had a rod wrapper take it up to where the real seat was because I used to cast with this one. And where the real seat is, we cut there and used that real seat as a ferrule for this big one. So now the rod is actually 10 foot 6 but it's an original 553 Harrington as well. And this one was also made famous too because back in 04 time frame, I caught two bull sharks at the same time on this one. It was a five foot, uh, five foot two and a five foot 10 uh, bull shark that I caught at the same time on a single stingray. So that was pretty cool because then it came out all over the news and everything. And granted it was a Spanish station, it still came out on the news. <laughs> So, <clears throat> these two actually were the next ones that I got into the collection. And these I got back in 04, 05 time frame. Um, I actually had just pulled in with my rods hanging out the back and they were all tied down and had styrofoam around them and everything. And a gentleman come up to me and he was like, uh, he was like, man, those are Harrington's, right? And he was like, that's that, that's this. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, okay, you know your stuff. I said, who are you, you know? So we started talking, he goes, well, he's all, I've gotten to the point where I don't have the ability to use these rods anymore. He's, are you interested in two more Harringtons? And I was like, well, yeah, you know, I was like, I said, but what's the price? He's like, well, actually, because I'll do you a real good price because I know you're not going to let them go. I said, no. I said, my rods, they, once they get a collection, I don't like to let them go, especially if I've already fished with them. So he sold me both rods with reels, and they were Daiwa uh, 450Hs is what they were, both of them, and he sold them both to me for 700. So what I did was, I turned around and sold the Daiwas for 150 apiece, so basically I got these for next to nothing. And they've been in the collection since 04, 05 time frame. And actually right there, you can see where it has my nickname, Z-Man, and that was a military thing. And then my name right there. This is the original wrap. I had a rod builder actually pull out the name that was there and put my name in there. And then this one, same thing, original wrap. Now these two rods were actually built by uh, Bob Renault when he used to have a tackle shop here. He was also the main guy that taught many of the rod wrappers here in Corpus, the old schoolers, how to wrap rods out of Del Mar College. So one of the guys that used to work with him or go to his house and wrap rods with him was Santos Ramirez, Ramirez, sorry. <clears throat> Excuse me, my cough is still kicking my butt. But he actually put the first coat of epoxy on both these rods when Bob Renault was building them in his garage. So these got an extremely long history on them. And the guy that had them before me had them for at minimum 25 years. I've already had them in the collection for about 14 years. So that gives you an idea on those rods right there. And they're still catching fish like crazy. <laughs> All right, now this one 
if y'all remember that video where I was talking about that I actually broke one of my twins, well this one was the original one, and there's two of them, there's twins, that look identical. Same wrap, same everything from top to bottom. However, the other one now is missing this portion of it. So I haven't decided yet what I'm gonna do with it. I've got uh, a gentleman saying that he can repair it to its original thing. I just don't know if the play will be the same thing as it was, you know, with this one. So it's it's a very hard choice for me to make because I really don't like when they change up the rods and you know these Harrington's and Harnells like this. It's it's a very you know I had to work a lot of years to get to them, and when I finally did, I really don't like to let them go unless I know they're going to my family. So uh, I got twins of these, and these actually came into the collection in uh, 07, 07, 08 time frame right there, and it was both of them at the same time, same kind of deal. Guy made me an offer I could not refuse, so. Now this one is 553 that I found on my buddy's shelf. And I liked it so much, and I stared at it for a long time. I just didn't have the money at the time. And it took me a while, but I finally was able to get my hands on it. So I had my initials put down, down to right here at the bottom. And so this is one of my 553s, besides the other one. Now this 553 was actually found in a pawn shop as well, but it was a orange color, and it was orange and brown with some gold. And at that time, I was like, you know what? I said, I want to actually have one built, but I want the same kind of wrap done just so I can kind of remember. And the same thing, I had my initials put in here at the bottom and stuff like that. But this one was already cut down to nine foot. But that's the way I found it. And I've had it built that one time and keep fishing with it like that. This is normally one of the ones that I'll throw my HXW Raptors on it and do my cast. That black and gold one y'all know as well if y'all had been watching my video where I was casting the 130 that's the rod that I was actually casting the 130 so that's also pretty good now this one is actually my son's rod I found this one in the pawn shop as well but uh, I actually had his his name put in there his nickname Nico Z and then you know it's got a nice little shark that was already in there and stuff like that but this is actually a 542 Harrington, and I got it because at that time he was a lot smaller, and you know I felt it would be a good way to put a you know small reel on there and get him fishing on it. But boy, ain't miracle growing is just poof. <laughs> so, yep. Now, this one. There's another one that I found in the pawn shop, and I found this one, this one, at the same time. I found both of these in the pawn shop, and actually I think there's another one too, but I gotta confirm it. But uh, yeah, I found these two, and I got this one, of course, because it's a marine thing. You got the chevrons going, and Marine Corps sticker right there, which is pretty awesome. I don't like how small it is over here on the bottom, but still I don't want to change it because it was built for a reason. And, uh, and you know, they even have the Eagle Globe and Anchor there and the flag raising ceremony there. And they got a name, Dustin. So found that one in the pawn shop with this one. And this one still, I have yet to fish with. No, actually I've already fished with this one. Caught some drum on it and stuff like that, but nothing major on it. So but still, it's in the collection. this one this one was a real tricky rod because they brought in saying it was a 552 Harrington and I picked it up and I felt it I was like no that don't feel right kind of deal but you know it still has the sticker from when it was actually built by Roy's bait and tackle back in 05 and there you go 12 18 05 is when they started making payments on it and as you can tell, it has never even had a reel put on it or mounted on it. And yeah, it's in immaculate condition. Look at that, still beautiful. Now, I was able to track down the rod builder on this rod and he confirmed actually it was one of the older style 552s that he had actually built. And he actually, what he would do is when he would build a rod, he would put a piece of tape on there and write on there exactly what the rod was 
when he built it and what count it was. He built 16,000 rods while he was working for Roy's Bait and Tackle at that time. And this is almost a decade ago that he has, you know, moved on and done bigger, better things. But for him to come come in and confirm what it was was pretty awesome. You know, the dude, his name is Alex. And, you know, from a fisherman standpoint, you know, you take great respect in other people's artwork and stuff like that. And granted, it's so pretty and everything. I still have yet to mount a rod, a reel on it. I probably doubt I ever will just because of who built it and then the history behind it that nobody has actually fished with it which is crazy so this is a this rod already holds a special place in my in my collection because it's the only virgin everything about it so <laughs> almost done guys we're almost done all right this is a 585 uh harnell that was also found in the pawn shop and we found out it was a Harnell because the original owner of the rod saw it in my collection and he gave me the whole history on the rod itself. So, yep, that's one of them right there. And actually this is the one I intend on putting the 130 T-Rex on. I originally had the 80 T-Rex on it, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and mount it with the 130 and keep rocking and rolling from there. This one is actually a 580. The model says 25 130. It's a 130 pound class rod. And I've actually mounted many of my 80s and my T Rexes on here. And I've landed some very decent sized fish. Um, Y'all actually saw it when I had the 130 mounted on here. And we were fishing Bob Hall Pier when I had my son pull in a black tip. My friend's dad pulled in a black tip on it. And then I also pulled in a black tip on it. So, you know, this rod and real combination has really done. A lot of use already and we're still not done with it yet. Now this Harnell, I haven't fished with it yet. I got it into the collection but I haven't fished with it because this is actually a stainless steel bottom end of a butt you know right there and it's actually it looks like it was custom made just so that way they can have a unibutt on there but that it wasn't the wooden or the uh, aluminum setup. But yeah, this one's a, what they call it. This one is a Harnell 580, as you can see the sticker right there. And that was the same thing I did. I had them epoxy over it in order to protect the thread work and, you know, the sticker there. So, yep, it's pretty nice. Pretty, pretty nice. These two are actually Z1s. They are 8130 pound bats and blanks. And this is when I was doing a collaboration between my team and Breakaway Tackle. Uh, the original rod that was built was actually this one right here. And there he goes, a Z1 Breakaway right there. And it was a collaboration where I told him what I wanted in the rod and how I wanted it built. Well, after I had it built, I ended up catching the world record tiger on it. And actually the secondary tiger that I caught too would have also been a line class, 100, 100, or 100 pound line class world record, but I didn't submit it in time. Or actually, no, that's the one that actually died on us and I reported that in, I was like, hey, we released it, but it ended up dying on us, you know, hours later or whatever. And so we actually used that as the precursor to block all other shark fishermen from entering sharks that have perished and or were killed intentionally or world record status on catch and release. So this is the rod that actually did it. And then, <clears throat> since I had a, had one built and I liked it and I was still trying to push the name, I had a secondary one built and this one we actually brought down the guide from the top one a little further because while I was fighting, I actually saw where the line was embedding itself into the foam here and yeah, so we, did some changes on it and stuff like that, but one thing I didn't like was the foam that they were using is not the type I normally would like to use, but that was what they had available. And so that's why this one's in the collection. And of course, y'all know my tackle industries and my vexings, and, and now the tank. That's the tank, and it's already first day out. We were catching drum on it. 
the tackle industries and the vex in here have been the same way. We've been hooking Jack Cravels, Sharp, Tarpon, Bull Reds, everything, everything with these rods. And going from those to these, it's very hard to have a rod just enter the collection and not have to worry about it. But these rods have done it. I've been dealing with the steadfast rods as well, which those I intend on getting more of so that way we can continue building the collection. But right now, that's what I have here. Like I said, I still have six more that aren't here, but they are four 552s and two 575s that aren't here. Two have 80s, three of them have LX Raptors, and the other one has an MXL. So on the next video, I'll show you what kind of reels I'm playing with. But that's the rod collection of Team Hard Life Captain Albert Zertucci.